uh, obviously a, a great stretch in front of us here of, of um, uh, NCAA tournament teams, really good teams. Nebraska is tremendous. Um, obviously, Northwestern later in the week, both those teams are tournament teams. And uh, I know we got three out of four on the road. So yeah, it's, a, it's important. Uh, stretch for us, important uh, for us to just focus on getting better here, and that's what we're doing. Um, so, as I said on the radio show, no real injury updates. Scotty's back with our group, so um, no real updates in terms of uh, roster um, that are that's significant beyond that. Chris, Nebraska may not have, like, you know, the sexy name in the basketball yeah. world, but they might be the hottest team in the Big Ten right now. So yeah. what are they doing so well this year? Well, they you know, a couple years ago they went – and I'm sure it was a conscious decision by Fred. I, they just they got really old. They got they went transfers, um, and they've just gotten really old. And Fred's always been a really good coach, um, a terrific offensive coach, but always been a really good coach. And um, they have uh, they've got a great system that he's recruited older transfers to. And they've always had an incredible home environment. You know, uh, regardless of kind of what their record is, it's just the way that's that's always been there. Um, but I think that's probably been the biggest difference is they've really hit the transfer market well. And, um, and you can see it because they had some success last year. Um, I think some people questioned, you know, they lost a good big kid. How would that affect them? But they got a transfer big kid who's been phenomenal for them. Uh, they had a transfer from Charlotte who's been terrific for them. Um, they've got a, obviously a really fun dynamic guard in Kese who's, who's, you know, fun to watch and a challenge to guard. So they've just got a really, a really good team that, that's a bona fide tournament team. I don't think there's any question. And with the way that they have things set up, I mean, with the way Fred coaches, you know, their perimeter is going to be yeah. solid, athletic, and they can shoot the basketball. So yep. what challenge is that going to present for you guys, whether it be with your switches or your perimeter yep. defense in general? It's going to really test us, Whitney. I think it's really going to test our um, – we're going to have to be really on point with our defense, really on point, because they can really shoot it. They can shoot it from multiple spots, and they are a real challenge to guard. Right now they're third or fourth in the league in offense. Their pace is good. Um, and they've just are a terrific shooting team, particularly at home. Uh, after the game, we asked you about Bruce, and you talked about teams hedging him the way that they have. Do, does that prevent him? How does that prevent him? I guess can you explain how that prevents him from getting downhill, getting to some of those mid-range pull-ups yeah. that he was so successful with earlier in the year? It's uh, I think it's neutralized that. To be honest, Adam, I think it's neutralized uh, him getting. They're just putting two on the ball, so it's it's really limited his ability to get downhill. Um, so I think we. We've got to look at some things where maybe we can help him with that, and he's got to continue to push the pace and tra in, um, transition. But yeah, it has kind of neutralized that, and uh, you know he's such a strong guard. I think that's a big reason why he's getting hedged. It's also allowed us here in these, you know, the last maybe couple games, but certainly the last game, of being able to uh, get the ball out of his hands and allow some of those other guys to make plays. And I think if we can grow in that area, that will help our team. It's like on a, on a day where he does go one of nine, I think he had six assists and two yeah. turnovers. So it's like his his assists have remained high. He's not turning it over. He's just not getting some of those spots. Are, where is that trade off for you? Where like you're okay if Bruce you know only has four points, but he had six assists or whatever. Like what what kind of balance are you okay with there? If he's not getting to some of those spots, teams are taking that away. Well, I'm okay if we have a good, you know, efficient effective offense, regardless of kind of what it looks like for any individual. Um, so and I, I think that's the way our, our team should be. And I know that's the way Bruce is. You know, obviously everybody wants to play well, but, you know, different different guys, different defenses are going to try to take different things away. His assists have been good, and he probably could have gotten another one or two if we'd have made a couple open looks. So I love his ability right now to, um, to find the open guy as well as to uh, play both ends and to compete on both ends. And he's just got to continue to lose himself in that. And he'll, he'll make some of the open ones that he's missing. And be, I think his offense will, uh, will come around. But again, we need other guys to help him too with their play to where he's not receiving quite the amount of attention he is. The Penn State game was an important win for you guys. Uh, what, what does it take, I guess, to build off of that and get a run going? And these wins would be just as important or even better if you're able to get a couple more this week. Just what do you do? I assume it's play, play good team basketball and continue to do the things that, 
you helped you win that game, but just what what can you do to build off of that? I suppose. Well, Steve, you've heard me say this before. It, you know, it's really about how how we're playing, and I think uh, I want us to play better than what we've played for longer stretches on the road. You know, than what what we've done here recently, and that's that's the challenge for us. Um, uh, I think you just you, if you do that, then you put yourself in position. It's, it's you know we're not playing we're not playing bad teams as you mentioned. These are good teams. We're playing on the road, um, uh, and I think our focus is just playing a com, you know as complete a game as we can offensively and defensively, and putting ourselves in, in position and knowing um, you know the, the competition we're going to face. With Bruce, kind of, you touched on this a little bit. Were you happy with the shots that he was getting? I mean, you want everything to come within a flow, I presume, and yeah. you want him to also take shots when he's open. I mean, yes. we talked about that early in the season. You want yes. him to be assertive, but what was your overall comfort, I guess, with how that looked? Good, all but a couple of them, Steve. I think I was more than happy with all about a, all of a couple of them. You know, I think both he and Roddy and those other guys, you know, they've got to take open threes, um, rhythm threes, you know, paint touch threes. So I, I've got uh, uh, absolute confidence in um, in that. So I just I want them to keep doing that. I think they will. I want them to stay stay aggressive and confident. But maybe there was one or two that I didn't love. But for the most part, they were all really good looks. Chris, you've talked about how good the bench was for you over the weekend. Uh, does it take time in a season to know how to maximize each bench player's ability and, and way they can impact the rotation? A little bit, yeah, a little bit. Particularly, uh, maybe a little bit. Harder for you for younger players, um, but your and, and your transfers have an adjustment there too. But they've kind of been through it, so they understand it more. But yeah, it does take a minute, and I think you're looking right now as we you know move into this second half of the season. Um, you know who's embracing that role, who's playing their role to a high level on both ends, who's helping us win possessions, and you're going to give those guys uh, opportunities. Kese, uh, I know he has a limited range, it seems like, but what else makes him a challenging guard? He's uh, motor. He's incredibly fit. Um, he has uh, got a really quick release, and he's now been able to drive it uh, and get to the free throw line a little bit because of the amount of pressure he puts on the defense behind the, behind the arc. Chris, how important is it for you guys to get off to a quick start like you did on Saturday, especially on the road? 16-0 start. That's going to be a challenge in any game, but to your point, we are going to need to get off to a good start, and it's hard to expect that kind of a start, right? But to your point, especially when you go on the road, to get off to a good start, um, it's important. You know, it's important, and uh, I think that's going to be a critical for us here in these next couple games. And Saturday marked your 250th career win. How, how do you think your experience can help this team down the stretch? Well, listen, I, I, as I've said, um, you know, uh, it's really a byproduct of, of uh, having good players and, and a, a good staff. And I think, you know, what I lean on in this, this moment right now is I really believe in this group's um, collective kind of character, if that makes sense, and their ability to respond to adversity and challenges. Uh, certainly I'll, we'll help lead and bring perspective to them. Uh, as we have, but you know, I'm a big believer in this group's just ability to respond to whatever moments come, and that's really what you're looking for, both challenging and success. So we play well on Saturday. How we how do we respond on Tuesday? Uh, we need a level of maturity in doing that. I've got a high level belief in this group. I mean, we've talked about Kase, but they, you know they've got um, four guys that average at least 11 points. They've got yeah. a lot of guys who can shoot the ball, as you've pointed to. I, what, what's the difficulty as a defense when you know you have a team like this where the scoring is really kind of coming from everywhere and the yeah. shooting is also kind of coming from everywhere? Well, that's that's the, that's why they're so hard to guard. Their five-out system is hard. Uh, they have five three-point shooters on the floor at times. That puts it that puts you in a really difficult spot. Uh, they're big that they got a transfer from, I believe, from Bradley's is has been terrific. Um, he's a three-point shooting five man who leads him in assist. Um, their five out uh, system is tailor made for kind of what Fred has been trying to do. So, yeah, their shooting puts a real premium, and they cut exceptionally well. And they've got a a big who can pass the heck out of it. Okay. Yep. Yeah. How important is that to kind of, you know, get to honor Felix a bit more than 
You do. And, and yes, and I think it might free up the guards a little bit, you know. His, what he's done a better job of is, is creating action offensively. And, um, you know, obviously you've got experience in, in playing, so you get like just he's, he's able to um, slip out of a ball screen to, you know, uh, catch it, make a quick decision on a dribble handoff. He's creating more action right now for us uh, maybe than what he had done previously in the year, and that's what he's got to continue to do for us, and that's been a good thing to see. Yeah, I think that's a big part of it. I do. Uh, yeah, you mentioned how you like your players, how your players like respond. Um, so with Scotty, like since obviously this is mm -hmm. mentioned, like how have you seen him respond, and what do you, you maybe want to see out yeah. of him in the next? Yeah, good, days? good. Like I said, he's a great kid. Had a good, good approach and good attitude in practice. And yeah, I mean, I think sometimes it's you know outside world makes makes a bigger deal of this than than what it is. He, he's good. Yeah, he's good. Do you have one last one, Adam? You've talked about Dale the last couple of games, and you said you needed to commit, commit to give him more consistent minutes. I think so. Uh, what what goes into that decision with a player? Like, were you just seeing something where, I guess, how, how do you get to that that conclusion? I guess with a guy that he's going to get better if we if we just give him more minutes. I think some of it was just trying to, you know, really think through what maybe what's best for our team, and I think what's best for our team is to get. Um, may be able to alleviate some of the pressure from our primary scorers and primary ball handlers. We need another guy. And right now, Dale is proven in practice uh, to be the most uh, ready for that. And uh, But I, I need to get him in a little bit more of a rhythm, too. If I could, one more. Just something I, I get from a lot of readers, and especially after the last game where you play well, Jamison takes two three-pointers. I get question a lot about like trying to draw up specific plays for guys to shoot threes. I guess is that how how challenging is that? Are well, you the looking? defense knows he's a three point well, that, shooter. Do they realize that? At. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm getting at. Like okay. the challenge of getting a guy like Jamison open and the balance of drawing up a specific play for one guy to get a shot compared to where you want shots coming in the flow of an offense. Yeah, I, I think maybe he could have taken a couple more, but like we had a couple baseline underneath uh, actions uh, for him, uh, Adam. But again, the defense knows. Uh, and they were really physical on his cut, and they trailed and then whipped one. Uh, we could have changed the angle of our screen a little bit. Maybe he could have snapped it off a little bit quicker. Uh, but uh, I didn't come out of the game thinking necessarily that, that he needed to shoot uh, more. Uh, but uh, I think there are times where he could certainly shoot more. But I also think he's getting a lot of defenses really pressing up on him and taking away the three. And uh, he did a really nice job driving and attacking a closeout. Um, got a foul on the skip. I think Roddy skipped it to him, maybe. But um, yeah, I think it's it's it's. You know, I, I always think he's got to be really ready to shoot. Uh, you were at the press conference. If I could just ask real quick, sure. Ross Bjork. Uh, have you had a chance to talk to him since then? Yeah. And uh, I know Buzz Williams worked for him. Works for him at Texas A&M. Yeah. Anything about? His view of basketball, or just what, what, what have you gleaned? I guess you want me to share my co private conversation with Buzz. Yeah, it's your private okay. conversation with Buzz. No, just um, whatever you, whatever you're hearing, whatever you think. Yeah, no, um, I, I yeah, I talked to Ross. Um, I can't remember what it was last Monday or Tuesday. Um, had a great conversation, and you know, we in, uh, kind of introductory, and just had, had a really good conversation. I've heard uh, really good things about uh, his ability for fundraising and nil in this new space. Uh, talked to some industry people um, who have all uh, said really uh, positive things. So, yeah, look f looking forward to it. Just real quick, is there anything imminent about Big Ten format for next year? Or You talked about about a month ago that some things were being discussed. Are you guys continuing behind the scenes to hash it back and forth, or what, what are they thinking? There may be a coach or two in the Big Ten that's thinking about some of that stuff right now. I'd be shocked if there was, Steve. Yeah. Uh, I'm certainly not. I, I don't know. Um, but again, if I get word on it, you feel free to ask me and I'll share it yeah. with you. But About I've, every six weeks, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I knew it was coming, Steve.